Okay, so here is the continuation of the lesson class that we're doing, which is kind of, you know, we'll call it art to part. Um, again, as what we've been using so far as a good geometric design example is this Braun coffee maker. Um, it really does uh, embody simple shapes uh, that can be built very easily in solid works. The previous demo was to break out and show what are the various geometric shapes in here. So now what we're going to do is go into building it in SolidWorks. What we want to do is get a nice sketch, profile sketch that we think we can use from a side view. And then let's assume that we did not have this beautiful picture, but instead we had our 2D line drawn. Now, we're going to make some assumptions here and that assumption is that we've designed it proportionately and the total height is 15 inches. Now when you bring a piece of paper or a sketch into SolidWorks and put it on a sketch plane it will bring it in at the full size and, it, and you will need to scale it or you will need to adjust the size of it um, and that can be a little bit tricky with this extra space. So a good trick is to come in and since you know what the exact height is what we're going to do is we're going to crop it so we'll start here and we're only worried about cropping the height because we will make the height 15 inches and do a proportionate scale so we'll save that out let's turn off that dimension layer because we don't need it and then we're going to save this as a JPEG because it's going to be a smaller file and we don't need the extra layers within it embedded. So we'll go save underlay. There we go. Okay, so we now have SolidWorks up and running and it's open. And what we're going to first do is bring in the actual sketch. Uh, and put it on one of the planes so that we have that as a reference. Now, you want to select the plane, go to Tools, Sketch Tools that you see here, and Sketch Picture. Now you can see it's grayed out, and that's because we haven't actually started a sketch. So if we come over here, go New Sketch, we have the sketch uh, icon on here. It shows that we're working in there. We've also got our 0, 0, 0 access there. So now if you come up here and you go tools and you go to sketch tools you can now see that the sketch picture is available. So we're going to go to the spot that we actually have um, the sketch. Now you can see that my desktop is really messy so it makes for a pain in finding it. There's our SolidWorks underlay that we're bringing in and you can see it's a fairly large image and you can also see that if you look at the dimensions of the unit it's not proportionate so by going into here keeping in mind that we want to lock the ratio we know what the height is so we're going to simply go in here and toss in 15. Now you can see that it's scaled it down at the same time what we can see is that it is currently the base of the product is at the zero zero mark so what we can do is adjust it move it around and get it positioned how we want now one thing I missed that would have been good or helpful is for me to draw the center line down the sketch so but in order to do that we're just going to do a quick little um, adjustment and we will draw a center line within the sketch that allows us to do that and then we will adjust the image location now you can see I can't move it what I need to do is double click on the sketch and then move it so for this we will get it approximate and we want to just move it up a little bit now, 
we have this in, but let's make sure that our sketch is right. And the best way to do that is to simply build a box. We had said that it was going to be 15 inches high. So let's just draw another center point construction line will go off of there we'll draw one off the floor as I've talked about before I think it's always good to have something off the bottom or have your part located either dead center or up on the bottom so let's do a quick dimension you can see that it's 15.04 a little bit of that is because I'm a little bit off there so let's just go to 15 and you can see for the intensive purposes of what we're doing this is quite good so move it around this is only going to be used as the reference sketch so we're not going to do much more with it other than that now as I mentioned your menu tree is going to get pretty long so double click or right click on there and what you can do is come in and rename it. I always have a hard time doing this, so I apologize. So what we're going to do is just go sketch underlay. And you can call it whatever you want. But if someone else opens up your file, they now know what it is. Um, one thing I also forgot is that when you're drawing your lines over top of this, it can get hard to see the actual drawing lines because what you're working in is a black and white sketch with working in with black lines so or blue lines that are hard to see so much like any other underlay that we do it always helps to make this a little bit more transparent so you have the options down here for this, we're going to do the full image. And what we're going to do is just increase the transparency. And you can see that it is dropped down. We'll exit out of that sketch. Now, what we want to do is we will draw the line here just to demonstrate. And now you can see that line considerably better. Okay, so. We're done with that sketch we'll exit out we've got that if we ever need to hide it we just simply hide it if not unhide it so there now we're pretty much set up to start modeling so what we have is everything placed down and what appears to be one perfect cylinder going all the way up but I don't know if that's necessarily true so let's take a look um, what we'll do is we will build a cil cylinder that goes straight up and at the center point. Now, because we did do center center and the sketch is on the center, the nice thing is now that when we do this, we can actually just reference that from the center point. Now, we also defined it and we said it was going to be eight inches in diameter um, so what we can do we now have that we'll extrude it up and then let's see if it is correct and what we'll do for that is we'll just simply go to the sketch lines So you can see so we have the diameter built and extruded what I like to do is always go back and check to make sure it's based off my sketch and you can see that for some reason it's not proportionate now and I know the reason and that's because I got the number eight stuck in my head um, and that wasn't exactly what it is so the nice thing is We've identified that and we've done it early. So that's why I usually build, check, and then refine. So let's just go in, get that diameter correct. We'll change that down from 8 to 5.5. You can see that it updates 
will exit out. Let's go back. Now you can see I've got that diameter right. So let's adjust the height that we did. We said it was going to be 15 inches tall. Hit enter. And now that we know the base of our model is going to start and be correct. Now, we could start cutting this out, but I've noticed that as we look at it, it's not a perfect extrude. So what we might want to do is take a slightly different approach than just doing an extrude and do a whole bunch of cuts to give us all of our individual parts because we want to try to stay as true as we can to it. So let's delete this. We want to get rid of the sketch that we did down there. And what we're going to use is the revolve command. So in order to do a revolve command, we need to draw a profile and do exactly what we just said, revolve it around a sketch or a center line. So as always, we need to start with a sketch. We'll select the front plane, go into sketch mode. And then what we want to do is use the revolve. So in order to do a revolve, first thing, let's create a center line. We're going to build that right off of 0, 0, 0, so we know it is symmetrical. If you want to finish off a line, double click the left mouse button, and then that just automatically stops it. Now, for what we're going to do is we're not going to get complex and try to do one massive revolve at all times. And part of the reason I don't want to do that right now is I may want to adjust these some of these things individually proportionate. Um, because it may be I'm not 100% done with the design, and once I get the 3D model, I'm going to want it to adjust it a little bit more. So in order to do that, we are going to build out some of these components and then break them out later. So let's start with the center piece here. Um, we can see that this is one main piece with the radius, and then it drops down. So we're going to build out this first portion. In order to do that, I'll draw on my top line. I'll go straight out. And now, right now, I'm not going to necessarily fully define this. And I'll show you why in a second and the advantage of that. So, I now have this. What I want to do is I'm going to use a spline. So, let me just create a quick guideline here of where I think that spline is going to go. Come over here. I'm going to grab my spline tool. And we'll get into this a little bit more um, on how to use the spline tool. But basically, one of the biggest mistakes is that people try to copy the form exactly and use a whole bunch of points to get the spline right. Now, the problem with that is when we come in and evaluate it, which is the right click button, and then you can show the spline features or you can go into evaluate click on the spline and pull up the curvature continuity so what we'll do is right click show the curvature and then what we'll do is we'll scale it out so we can see it but you can see here what this means is it folds in on itself so we want to try to avoid that. And that is hard to do when you're using multiple points. So it's always best to take the time and to try to use as many or the fewest points that you can. So there we have it drawn as a straight line. If we click on it, you can see these handles appear. The first one adjusts the length of the curve. This one adjusts the angle that it starts at. So here you can see that we've got that. Now what I like to do is immediately toss on my show curvature cones because I want to make sure that I don't get that or have something so it's, it's always should be the comb on there. Now you can see how this doesn't match up 
because it starts off perfectly straight. So let's take this point and we will drop it down and get it so that it comes out a little bit flatter. You can still see, it's hard to see because it's yellow, so I apologize for that, that the combs do not go back over. So I'm going to say that's good. Now, I do need to have this come up here all the way. So we'll snap it to that line. And the advantage to snapping it is that if I want to lift it up or move it down, that that spline stays attached. And we'll, we'll again, in another class, we'll get far more into that detail. So I want to have this be the top piece. We'll drop it down a little bit. And I've got that there. We're going to call this good. We'll do this as a separate revolve. So what I'm going to do now is go back and trim it. Now, we can add different radiuses in this sketch. Um, for the intents of this model, I'm going to use the radius tool later because theoretically this is a radius that has G2 continuity, which means it's not just a standard arc. But what we want to do is go into our sketch features. We're going to use the trim command and trim this up. Now, we've got that. We'll exit out of the sketch. We've got the sketch there that we can see. We'll come over, use the feature of the revolve. It says the sketch is currently open. Non-thin revolution features require closed sketch. Um, we'll automatically close it. And what that means is it's going to put that in there, which is a line from there to there. So what we want to do, select the axis, which is what we created. You can see it automatically starts ro revolving. To get a better view of that, let's go there and change it to that. We'll accept. And then we can see that we've got that first part. Now, I'm not going to worry about the radiuses until later. So, But as we look, not everything has to be a profile or a revolve. What we can do is take this plane or this item and let's look at that as an extrude. So we want to build it off the top so we'll select the surface, create a new sketch, go normal to that, and then we'll start by putting a di diameter in there. Now for this I do want to dimension it um, purely because I want to be able to quickly know what size it's going to be um, and in these situations, I always have a ruler in front of me so that I know if I'm making something too big, too small, um, just the general feel. So let's go with that. We'll make it a nice even number because there's no reason for it not to be. Um, we'll exit out. And now we'll do a quick extrude. And you can kind of see I probably have it a little bit too big there based off of what I want to do for my sketch, which is not bad because the nice thing is we'll do the extrude first. We're going to take that and you can see it's already way high up, but let's just drop it down to two inches. And then we can, if we want, instead of doing dimensionally, we can just drag it that way. And you can see I've got about the right height again. I like to make things nice and round. The engineers like that. So now you can see it's bigger than we want it. And you know what? Proportionately, we like the diameter from our sketch. So go back. We don't have to adjust anything. We can go straight to the sketch. Click on the actual dimension. And let's drop it down to 1.75, we'll say. Well, a little too much. I was going to go with two. Maybe I should have. So there, we're good. Exit out of the sketch. And then we have that part. Now, right now, as you recall, we've got solid bodies. So if I click on that, it's all one part. Later on, I would have to separate it out. So I don't want to have to do that. So when I extrude things, we always have the little option that if we come back and edit the feature, that we have a 
merge results. So what it's asking is, when I did that extrude feature, do I want to join these two things together? Well, the answer for that in this situation is no. So if I unclick that, I accept the command, you now see that I have two revolves in here. One is the main body, the other is the top dial. Now, also remember what I said about enjoying that it is helpful to find the parts and this will help you later to name them now. So we'll just call it main body and that'll help down the road that we'll get into. So, but for this, I'm not going to do everything at this time. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we're going to come in and we're going to just make the bottom plate here quickly. Now, before that, I could do a variety of things. I could set the plane and do an offset plane, internal reference geometry. So I select that plane, I come up, I go insert, go to reference geometry, and I'm gonna insert a plane. And it automatically knows that I wanna go off of that one. So let's go to a front view, and we can see and say, well, this is how high we want the plane. It's going to be 0.2. So that's one way of doing it, and then I would sketch off of the top of that plane. Or another way to do it is to come in, create the circle or the diameter on the sketch that is the main plane or the top plane. And we're going to come in, go in, draw a circle. And again, you can see the nice thing is, since I know this is centered, I'm able to do everything just like that and know that it's going to be centered. So we've got this, we're going to say it's 5.5 like the other. And when I say the other, I mean 6.5. So what I'm going to do now is I'll extrude that part. But what I want to do is I know that that distance is 0.2 from that plane. So instead of doing all the extra planes, what I'm going to do is come in, get that front view again, and I'm going to use one of the feature commands in here. Instead of saying blind, I'm going to say offset um, from surface. I don't necessarily want to do that but I can go into plane and I can go offset from the plane. So I click on that. And what that means is it will start my extrude however far off of whatever surface or plane I'm building. Now, I wanna just tweak this a little bit. We'll say 0.61. See where that gets us? Not quite there. I can also simply go up by those by using the up and down arrows. So let's go with 0.7, that pretty much gets it. Um, we'll hit exit out of that. And now we've got our next extrude. Because it wasn't coming in contact with anything, we didn't need to worry about making it um, uh, merge or not merge. So what we can do is we'll call that I always struggle with doing the renaming and clicking on it properly. I'm not sure what I'm doing. So for that and the sake of this, we are going to just simply ignore that until later. So what we've got now is we've got three main components going on here. Let's do the next component, which is this bottom piece, and it's going to come off of there. So. Again, we're going to create a sketch, and you can see how creating sketches really drives this. Um, so planes are extremely important. Um, we want to go here. We want to. You can see that my sketch is 100% symmetrical, but we pretty much know that that's where we're going to go. So what we want to do is draw the line for the bottom part. We'll draw a line up. 
And then for this, we could do an arc or a... So what we'll do is we'll go a center point arc or three point arc and we're going to put one here. We're going to do one point and we're going to snap it to the edge of this model because we don't necessarily want a gap. And then you can see that we've got what we're doing or we have what we want. Now, you can notice here that down in the bottom, we're getting kind of that hard edge. That's not something that we want. So what we can do is adjust it a little bit. We don't like that, so we'll delete that. We'll build another one in. And for this particular model, what we're going to do is just leave it like that, and we'll add a radius to smooth that out. In a more advanced tutorial, I'll start showing you how to use splines to get nice smooth curves that are not arc based. So what we need to do now is close off the top. We'll draw a line here. We'll go from that point because we want to keep our edges perfect. And now what happened before you saw that there was the arrow because it was saying it was not a close sketch. Now, SolidWorks can close it off for you, but it is always good to get in the practice of doing things accurately. So, what we want to do now is we're going to close off the sketch by doing that in the center line. Then we will hit accept. We'll exit out to accept our sketch. And you can see that we have it here. Now, you can see the other sketch is still showing up. And you can still see that primary center line that we have there. So what we can do is use that to revolve. It's going to ask what the sketch is. Just click on the sketch. It'll ask, oh, you can see that I made a mistake there because it asked for the axis revolution. So let's click that. It already knows that's the sketch. And we can do this and get it. Now, one other thing that we can do is instead of doing and trying to use this the axis point from another sketch that can sometimes um, become messy because you always have to turn the sketch on and off what we can do is we'll put in a reference geometry and what that'll be is a axis point so again insert we'll come down we will go to oops insert um, we're gonna go to reference geometry and we're going to put in an axis what it's asking is now what are the intersections we're going to say between two planes so we know that the front plane and the right plane interact intersect perfectly so now you can see that we have an axis now maybe I don't want that there so what I can do is because it's not related to anything I can just move it right up to the top so I always know where it is. What I can then do now is I'll come, I'll use my revolve tool. It's going to ask for a sketch or a work plane. So there's my sketch. And I will use that axis that I just created to make the part. Now here we do want a separate part so we want to not merge the results. Now, usually I wait till the end to put the radiuses in, but I just want to show you this here quickly so that we can fix this because you can see that there's a hard edge there, especially when we go to the side view, that there's that kind of um, hard point that we don't necessarily want. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that edge. We're going to put in a radius. You can see that that is probably too small. Let's get it up a little bit. That looks good. Another time we'll go into all the features of the radius, but for now we'll just do this simple one. Accept that. And now you can see that that's smoothed out. So you can also see though that my radius is a little bit jagged there. I think that is probably because I forgot to do one of my settings. 
So we'll go into the document properties. We'll go model display, image quality, and we're gonna just really crank that up as high as we can go. So we'll go okay. And now you can see how that edge now is all smooth. So, and that's more just to visually help you and know whether you have it done right. Um, what we have next is the handle part that comes out and it's all gonna be one shape. So let's build that off and complete it uh, before we do anything else. Now, this starts becoming cumbersome, having all these parts in here. I wanna focus on just this one. So let's just come back and we will hide the various parts that we have created just to help. Okay. So in order to build this part, you can see that it's slightly raised off. So we're gonna do what we did before. We are going to start with that bottom sketch plane and we will start with building a new sketch. I'm gonna go normal to that. Now again, I like center lines because eventually when we dimension things, we wanna make sure everything is accurate and built off of that. So I'll draw my center line in. And then for this, I'm gonna actually use a rectangle. And to ensure that it is symmetrical, because we're always gonna want the dimensions on both sides to be accurate, I'm going to come here. And the nice thing is, is that no matter what happens, it's always gonna be equal dimensions. So it just makes it easier. I'm going to dimension the hard point here. And for this, we are gonna say it is, you know, 1.5 wide. Um, that is something that is uh, measure of man. You can look that at Dreyfus and ergonomics. It's a standard dimension for width. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we know how long it's going to be. So you can kinda of see that in order to get this, we really should have a reference point on it. So let's go back to here. And you saw how I made the center off of this. Well, perhaps we know exactly where we want that to be in regards to the sketch. So let's get that centered on there. We'll go back and from that center point, we're gonna pull it out and just get an eyeball estimate here to see if it's what we want. Now, what I wanna do is dimension that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come off of there and put a dimension from the center so that we know where that center point is. Um, and then what we'll do is make it 4.3. So there we can kind of see we've got it right. Now what we're going to do again is the extrude command. Because we're in that sketch, it always knows um, that we're using that sketch. You can kind of see that it's going down the opposite direction. I've got two options to fix that. I can simply grab the arrow and drag it up, or I can come over here and just say reverse direction. Now, obviously it's too high up, so we'll adjust it down. But we also, if we go back to our front view, remember that we wanted to have it raised up a little bit. So again, to do that, you're adjusting the sketch plane. We'll say offset it, and we will Oops, we want to reverse the offset. We're going to say it's 0.1. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll adjust the height. And you can see just dragging it helps you to visually get an eyeball. But again, as I've told you before, I like to have things a good round number. 0 0.01 inches isn't going to make a difference to the aesthetics on the design, um, but it does make it easier later for dimensioning in that. So we will hit accept. We do want this to be part of this body. So for this one, we are going to merge it. And we say it's gonna be part of the body because we know that it's gonna be the same color, the same material, and the same handle. Now we'll get into doing the radiuses later, or if it helps you, you can kind of do it now just to give it that look and feel. Um, so, oops, that one's obviously way too big. We'll drop that down. 
And again, if you drew your sketch and you like the radiuses on there, then come in and take a look and see what you want. So that's pretty good, 0.2. And you can see we're not quite perfect, but it's good enough for what we're doing today. Now, as we mentioned, what we now have, oops, and for some reason they did not merge. So let's just go back. I must have missed the check mark, which I did. Merge bodies. So again, like I say, get in the habit of build, check, refine, so that you're not getting down two hours into your model and realizing, oh, hey, I made a mistake. So let us continue now onto the part, and we're going to decide what we want to do next. So we've got our parts here, and what I'm thinking I would like to do is I'm going to want to do this bar here just to have that done. Now, even though it is in a 2D sketch, it's a straight on view, my design intent is to have, you know, or the design intent for the actual product is to have two of these bars to provide support. So what we want to do is we're going to build that off of here at a 45 degree angle. In order to do that, we need to create a new sketch plane um, to get these bosses coming off and then we'll use that to build the parts. Now, in order to do that, again, we want to create a new sketch plane and we are going to use the front plane as our reference. So we come back in, we go insert, reference geometry, we're going to do a plane, and then what we can see here is we can adjust the angle. So we can do the distance offset, and we don't want any distance offset, so we want that to be zero. But what we do want is to rotate it. We want to select a reference and constraint, so let's use that axis that we had. And then what we're going to do is, oops, that's not actually what we wanted to do. So we'll turn that off. We'll do this again. We're going to go to insert. We'll go to reference geometry. We'll go to plane. So reference geometry, insert, go to plane. We want to make sure that is a zero um, offset. And then what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to click on the rotation angle. And we'll zoom out here. And what you'll be able to do is see the plane rotating. Still not getting it quite right. I'm not sure what I'm missing here. Sometimes these little glitches happen. So give me a second. Okay, I figured out what I was missing and it was actually a really simple thing. So we'll click on the plane. We'll go insert again, reference geometry. I'm sure this part you guys have perfect now. We're going to do it at an angle. So we want to do 45 degrees. And what it wants is a second reference because it needs to know off of what rope, what center point. So there you can see there's the new sketch plane. Don't worry about whether it's just on that side or that side. Now, we'll hit select or keep. Now here's the thing. Since we're going to do a part over there, we could either create another plane in a sketch and have to have two planes, do two sketches, and get the components off. But what we're going to do instead is just mirror the feature. Now, for that, I still want to do an emboss, or I could do a revolve. So for that, I think I'm going to do a revolve. Now, we're going to hit the plane, do a new sketch, Select that new plane, get in there, 
and can't really see where the bosses are that we want it for our sketch. So there we go, now we know the heights. Um, but it's not really the best view. So let us go to the right plane. We'll rotate it around. And that helps. Sorry about that. So what we're going to do is basically do a quick revolve. As always with the revolve, we need to have a center line. We're going to kind of fudge this in. And for this, since we're going to want it to join bodies, we're actually going to have it go into the part so that when we do it, the merges of the bodies. So draw this down, go in and up so that we have our closed off rectangle. What we can then do is give a quick dimension just so that we know and we can adjust it. In order to do that, we need an anchor point. So let us anchor this so that that center line does not move. We'll come in, we'll do our smart dimensioning. And it's 3.74659. So let's go with 3.75. Oops, sorry, my apologies. That was meant to be 3 point or point 0.375, point 0.375. And there we have it. Okay, instead of exiting out the sketch so that we know what it is, we are going to simply just go into the revolve command. And what that'll do is immediately recognize that. So you can see, oops, it's not necessarily connecting with the part. So what we can do is we are going to simply go back to our sketch. We're going to drag it in. Now, we need to put a dimension on it because we want to understand how far it's going to come out. So let's add another dimension there. And we're going to say it's going to come out of it simply by 0.5. And you can see because I didn't dimension or hard point on this piece, it didn't know what way to go. So it defaulted to pulling it back. Now, if we go back and we say we don't want this edge to move, we can select that line and do anchor or make fixed. So there, that will not move. So if we now come in and select that and go 0.5, it comes out and does that. So go back to our revolve command. Um, or actually, we've already revolved it, so we just need to exit out of the sketch. Okay, we've got that there. We'll go in, we'll hit the revolve. It automatically has a center line, so it knows what it's wanting to do. It's not quite, you can see I can change the center line. Hit select. And you can see I'm not getting something quite right. And that's probably because I didn't bother to do the dimension and it's coming off of here strange. So let's just go back to the sketch again. And we're going to fudge this a little bit. So, or you know what? Let me show you this. So I made a mistake in my sketch, but I just want to be quick about it. I'm going to select that face and I would pull out the, the for surface but because it's defined, it won't let me. So let's just go in. And you can also drag the dimension along that way. So let's go with, we'll say, one inch. And we'll say that that's what we want. You can also see that it's the main body and it's all one piece. Now, we want that over on the other side, but we don't necessarily want to have to redraw it, especially considering it was a pain in the butt, at least for me. What we're going to do is we're going to come up into our feature tools, click there, and what we're going to do is a pattern. Now, we're going to simply use this to mirror the part. We can come in and say, what do we want to mirror, mirror, mirror it about? 
Well, we're going to use the right plane because that is not the one we want. We're going to use the front plane because that will get it to over to this point. So there we've got the front plane and we're going to go features to mirror. So we just made a revolve. That's the feature. We'll select that and you can see that it now revolves. Let's hit yes. Now, when we go back later, if we want to add the radius, we can. Now, we could have added the radius there. So let's just add the radius now, um, just because it's starting to be look good, um, and we want to get that. So we'll put in the fillet there and there. Um, eh, it looks big enough now. We can wait until we get it all done in order to define what we're doing. Now, we need to have a tool that comes down and sweeps off of here because we're going to want the, the bars that come in. So let's see what we can do or what we need it to do for this. Um, we are going to want to make this a separate part. Uh, so what that means is there may be a time where if we want to do an exploded view or something, we want to have the opening in here that goes in. Um, in order to make this look more realistic. So in order to do that, let's actually go back a step before we mirror because we would need to make two features. So what we can do is we can go back to the revolve and we can say, okay, what that bar is going to fit into is a small opening. And we're gonna come in and snap it to the center. We'll give it a dimension. This dimension will drive the diameter of the bar. So we're going to say it's 0.5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just do a quick little cut feature. We'll adjust it. And we will say that is what we want. Now, the reason I went back before the mirror is because what I can do is when I come over to the mirror tool, I can edit the mirror command. And when it says what are the features, I can add in the cut extrude feature. So I'm not doing multiple commands at the same time. Okay, so we're getting there. We're starting to get a little bit of a shape, a little bit of a form to it. Now what we want to do is draw in our support bars. So we can also see though that down here, that's going to go in there. So maybe we want to have a little bit of an opening down there, just the same as this. So if we, again, if we do an exploded view, it looks good. We'll go down to our main menu. Okay, in order to do this um, bar, what we're going to probably use, or what we are going to use, is a swift boss command. Now, in order to do a swept boss, what we want to do is we need to have a profile, which will be the circle or the diameter, and then we need to have a path that it will follow along. So in order to do that, we are not going to use this sketch plane, but instead we will use this surface as our sketch plane. So what we're going to do is select that, go straight to sketch, and you know what? I just made a mistake. We can't do that because then it won't come out properly. So we're going to go discard. And what we are going to do is we will use this sketch plane because we want to make sure we're sketching properly. So my apologies for that. So we've got that there. We're now going to start with the sketch. And you can see that we're perfectly lined up now. So what we want to do is we're going to build the path first that it's going to follow along. So let's take our line. And what we're going to do is let's just go so we can see where the center is here. And we will switch this to show us our hidden lines. You can see where we want to come off of there. So we will take that 
we'll just simply draw a center line that can be used for a variety of things. For this one, we're going to use it as a reference point. And for some reason, we're having a slight problem here. So let me get out of there. We're just going to exit out 100%. We'll discard those changes. And what we'll do is we'll come in. We'll go back and we'll create our new sketch. We've got that now. We'll select the plane. We'll go normal too. And let's try this now. There we go. Now it's showing up. So we'll draw that in. What we also want to do is just make sure that we have a reference point at the bottom for where it's going to come in. Um, so we'll just draw that so we know where our center lines are coming in. So what we'll do is take it and now we're not too worried about it matching up with this just because um, that sketch doesn't show it at the right angle. But what we will do is we'll draw a line. It's going to come out a little bit. And then we'll do another line. It's going to come up. We'll draw past it. We'll draw our line that comes out of here from the center. And then we will add our radiuses. Now you can see that these actually aren't radiuses or full radii. They're kind of tapering in. But for this model, we'll make them radiuses. Um, and again, we'll show how to do that spline at a different point. So here we go, we've got this. Um, for this sweat, we are going to do a radius on the sketch. So we can come in and add the radius. So what we'll do is we'll select the line that we want the radius from in between. And then we will select the next line as well. And we're going to do both because we want them to be identical at the same time. And what we'll do is we'll just increase it up to see what we want. So we'll go with the 0.5. So we now have our path or our profile that is going to be used for doing the sweep. Sorry, I'm rotating around way too much. And you can see what we want to do here is go down. So basically what we want is this circle in here to sweep along and go down that path. So we need to now create the profile. And the profile is basically what is the shape that's going to go. So because we're going to have it start on this plane, we are going to use that surface as our sketch. And we will create the sketch. And then we will draw our circle in. We'll use that point as a reference because we want to have it on that path. We will make it just slightly smaller. Now we have our two elements. You can see the sketches down here. So let's go up to the swept boss. And you can see right off the bat it's grabbing that sketch for the profile. And then now it's going to ask for the path. So with that, we will grab that entire sketch. And you can see how it simply just goes straight down and creates that tube. Now there's some things that we need to understand um, about the shape of the profile and the shape of the path uh, that can prevent this tool from working. We will cover that again in another time because I think it's always good to know what does and does not work. So we are not going to um, have this be joined. So the feature scope, we're going to select the bodies. We're going to turn off auto select. And then we are going to look at our options. We're not merging tangent faces. So we will then hit, whoops, no body selected for the feature scope. So let's go back to all bodies. We'll hit select. And I got it wrong because as you can see, it actually is connecting to that. 
So let's just go back. We'll edit the feature. And you can see what I did is I just missed the merge results. So we'll finish that off. And now you can see that we have that as a separate part. I also didn't make the opening in the bottom of this, um, but that's fine for now. We'll worry about that later. Now, as we need two of them, let us go back to using our pattern tool. And what we'll do is we will mirror the feature. Now, another option is to come back. So if we want to continue to do less things and we want to have everything done in one command, let's just drag this up. So it's up in there. And then what we can do is edit the mirror. And again, we will just add one more feature to go in there. And now you see that we have that um, going on. Now I also again messed up a little bit, so my apologies. And this is where it becomes getting used to things. So what we've done here is we want to mirror the features, propagate, so there's something going on that I'm missing plain and simple. So a lot of times when that happens, what I do is just like to ignore it. We'll leave out of it. And we'll go back and just undo to get to the point where I did not mess it up. Let me just sweep that feature again. We're going to go with that. Oh, and I really messed up so because I did not redo that sketch. So bear with me here. My apologies. We'll do a sketch on there. Draw that out. Exit out of the sketch or click accept. We'll come back. We'll do our swept feature. That's our path our profile that's our path let's see if we can get this right this time options merge results turn that off hit yes and because I don't want to I don't feel like messing with this again I am just going to simply create another linear pattern for that feature so we're gonna go mirror mirror faces are plain we'll select the front plane we've already selected the, the sweep as a feature we want to make sure that merge solids is off and it's giving me some kind of error so let me just go out of that. My apologies here. Okay, so for some reason I'm not getting it to mirror the actual feature. Um, but instead of trying to figure out what the problem is, I'm just going to simply go back and we'll do a mirror, exact same as before, on the front plane. And instead of doing the features, I'm just going to select the body. So what I can do is come over here find my sweep body, look at my options, make sure that it is not merged solids, hit select, and then there I have it. So you can see that we're getting closer and closer to the final design here. Let us go in, make sure we've got our various parts. So we've got the top dial, we've got the bottom plate, we've got the handle, the main body, we've got the bar one, 
R2 for support structure. Now, let us go back to our sketch plane. We'll make these things and show them as that. And let's start taking a look at what we can do to get this a little bit closer, a little bit more refined. So at this point, let us just add a few radiuses to see if it's getting to where we want. Um, we'll grab this edge here. We're going to call that good, 0.2. We'll come up here. We'll add a radius for this. We want to increase it. So you saw before, I said I wasn't going to show you too much in the radius tool, but I do want to show you something because I just I don't like this ball radius. So if I put it on there, you can see how it doesn't necessarily make the spline. Um, and when I do my shaded view, it, it doesn't have that elegance to it. So let us just go back. We'll take a look at what we can do here. And what we want to try to do is to get that a little bit better because it's going to be coming down. And you can kind of see how it curves up and is a little bit of an angle there. So what we want to do is we'll come back to our fillet tool. We'll edit that feature. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of our tools here. So profile is circular or we can go with a conic radius. And you can kind of see how by doing that, it starts tapering it in. But it still doesn't give us necessarily the shape that we want. So let's just go back and use that as circular. But what we can do is we can go and change the fillet type. So we'll exit out of here, leave it the way it was, come back, re-edit the model. And what we can do is we can kind of take a look at where this starts, where it finishes on this one. So you can kind of see where we're pulling it up so that it's still that radius, but it's changing the shape of where it starts and finish. So let's get that part back down to there. And what we're going to do is we're going to just pull this in more. So there you can start seeing that the start of the radius is smaller and then it keeps it down there. So that gives it that nice little shape. So let's go here, we'll, we'll accept it. That's starting to look much nicer in my mind. Um, we still have what's known as G1 continuity. We'll talk about that as another time. Let's get this back, we'll take a look. Okay, I, I personally think that looks much nicer. It's that clean, simplistic design, but it's not just um, pure engineering model. So we've got that. Let's come down here. Let's just put a little bit of form to this. Again, we'll add some radiuses. We're going to do a chain radius so you can see how it automatically accepts that. We'll do another chain radius. And we're still going to keep it just as a constant radius. So let's come in. Instead of doing asymmetrical, we'll do symmetrical. You can see how that's getting us the dotted line. It means by default, this radius is way too high. So we got to get, there we go, get it way down. We're going to hit select. And now we start getting that shape. Now, as I look at this, I don't necessarily like the shape because I think my design intent, the design intent is that this face should be round like this face. So let's go and make a quick change on that. You can see that if we select that face, it shows us what the menu is or what the feature is in the menu tree. So we're going to keep that in mind and we're going to scroll all the way back and we're going to get to there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick cut to get that to match up. So 
on this surface. I'm going to draw a sketch. We'll go normal too. And I am going to simply draw a circle and pull it out to where I want it. Now, I only want to cut off this part. So in this situation, I'm just going to go very quick and I will create that sketch that will shave off that piece. I'll trim it up there to get that. I'll exit out. Then what I will do is I will come back. I'll use my extruded cut. Just scale that upwards so it goes all the way through. And now I have that. And what I'm going to do then is scroll back down. So you can kind of see, you can go design and refine it and do that. Now, looks like I blew two things up in red. So I always like to go back and fix that. So this is the fillets. So let's see. We have two fillets. Some fillet items are no longer in the model. Edit the feature to reselect the items. So what that means is I changed something and that edge that I created the fillet on no longer exists. So let's go edit. And it looks like the edge I had selected was this one. And by changing it, it moved it in and it views it as a separate edge. So let's just come here. It says it's missing. We'll, we'll select that. And you can see it pops it right back in. And then we've got rid of the red. Um, it always behooves you to go back and to fix these things um, versus waiting till the end. So again, I'm going to right click it. It shows me that I'm missing two edges. The top one's there, the other one's there. So what I can do is just replace them. Put them like that. And then I've got the radiuses. And you can see here that depending on how I put the radiuses in are going to depend determine the form. So here I've got it stopping there. I can put my next radius in. It's going to here and it's going to wrap around. And it's going to give me that look where it comes down and it stops there. You may or may not like that and that's fine. But as a separate option what I want to show you is that if I come back and I put the radius in the bottom here way at the beginning so I'll right click so I don't actually have to go over to the menu tree I can click on the radius right click and go edit feature what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge at the same time I will hit select scroll down and then I don't need this radius anymore because we got rid of those edges But now you can see that the shape is slightly different. The radiuses go down and around. And that just gives you a little bit more form. So we'll dump in the radius here. Obviously way too big in my opinion. I want the geometric shapes to look nice. Um, I'm not trying to make a completely blended model or morphic, trans morphic transitions. So for that, I'm going to just scale it down. I'll probably go to 0.0125. See how that works? Uh, way too much. 0.125. So let's go with half, 0 0.05. And I think that's going to work for what we're doing now. OK, so we've got this going. Um, we're moving pretty nice. Part of me always wants to jump ahead, but I think before we do that, let's finish off the main body. Um, we want to come up here. This is still a separate part. So we are going to add a radius to there. We'll still keep it pretty tight. Point 0.1. And I think, like what we did before, I think we want to add a little bit of this to that 
um, just to give it that little shape and feel. So we're going to go from a symmetrical radius, which means that the start point at the top is the same distance at the start point at the bottom based off that edge. So we'll go to asymmetrical. And what that means is the start point is a different dimension from the edge than the bottom point. We're going to keep it the same as before. So that, in my mind, and again, a lot of design is opinion. Um, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say I like what that does. It ties the two things together. So one of the things that I didn't talk about as I was doing this is when it comes time to do radi or renderings, the more realistic you can make it, the better. So if I come in and I get rid of all my hidden edges, this purely looks like something that is just sitting on there. That's not necessarily what we want because there's going to be part lines, there's going to be various movement um, between the parts. So let's go back to this. We'll do a sketch. We'll edit that sketch, or sorry, create a new sketch. We'll go normal to it. And all we're going to do is give it a little bit of a gap. So we'll draw a circle. Again, everything is based off the center line. And we just want a little bit of a space in there. So we'll remove that. And what we'll do is we'll take that and we're going to do a cut with that tool. We don't necessarily need to go down very deep. And what will happen is you will see now that we've got that gap. A little bit of a problem here where that goes down um, too far or doesn't go down far enough easily enough fixed because what we can do is turn off that main body we'll simply grab that surface increase the depth of it a little bit we'll exit out of that turn the body back on and now you can see when we go to this if you zoom in, you can start seeing there's a gap and it just it looks a little bit nicer. Um, what we can also do, because anytime there's a radius, that is where you're going to get the highlights. And when you do the renderings, if you don't have the highlights, it just does not look right. So let's just go in there and put in what's called a tool break radius, which is very small and usually 0.05. Just to get it small enough, for some reason it's not showing up. Oh, let's just go back to symmetrical is what we want. 0 I didn't necessarily have that as far down as I wanted it. So now you can kind of see that we're getting what we want. Let's turn this off. Now you can see with the line specifically that there looks like there's space in between there. All these little things help to add up to making it look good. Now, if we recall, these are all slightly different parts. So let's go to our front plane again. We will make this so we can see our sketch. And let's just, we're going to use what's called cutting the model. And we're going to insert a cut. And what that is, is we'll come up here, we'll go insert, cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude a cut but we're actually going to use a sketch to do it. So in order to do that, what we want to do is we'll do a sketch on the front plane and we're just going to draw a line and do our cut. So 
So now here you can see what I've done is I've kind of stepped it down to do that cut to get that first shape. Now what we can do is we can take, we'll go to our cut tool and we're going to use an existing sketch which we'll use that. It's looking at what direction we want to cut it in. We're going to go through all. So that means that we're going to go through both directions. And bodies to keep, we're going to do all bodies. Then we're going to have that now. You can see that my body disappeared. So I made the mistake in what I was going to select and what I was going to keep. So let's go back into there. We'll edit the feature. And when we do the cut, we want to select what ones we're going to keep. So we've got that there. Okay, so sorry for the little pause and disconnect. I had to rethink something. So I'm actually not going to do a cut because I want to keep both parts. So what I need to do is split this body in two. So instead of using the cut tool, which actually will always remove something, I'm going to come up to tools, sorry, insert, and we're going to go with split. sorry, under features, and we're going to come down, we're going to go to split, then it's going to ask us for the trim tool, and we're going to select that sketch. So the next is, do we keep target bodies or selected bodies? We're going to go selected bodies. We're going to select that body just to make sure that's it. You can see we have a few other menus here. Consume cut bodies, propagate, we'll get into all those things later. It's asking what ones we want to keep. We'll keep both. And now you can see that what we've got, oops, let me go in so you can see it a little clearer. We now have that part section. This will later on be that display screen that we saw. So what we want to do now is we'll do the next one. And sometimes it's good um, to do it all in one sketch or it's good to you know, break out the sketches. For this, let's try to do it all in one sketch. So we're going to go edit sketch because it's actually all in the same part. Let's get back to where we can see. And that's going to be our next one there. And we will draw the line. Now, depending on what you want to do, you could dimension these, you know, if you always want it the same. Or the nice thing is, is if you don't dimension it at this point, you can drag and drop. But it's easy enough to define the lines based on what you want. So, and again, get it to be a little bit more proportion especially if you're working on proportions you know rule of thirds it's nine inches um, and you want to cut it every three inches so then it's just it's just nicer to have that so let's go 2.25 we'll exit out of that sketch and now what you can see is we have multiple bodies there's the top one the middle piece and the bottom piece. So we're getting there. Now again, if I go back and I show this, in the rendering it looks just like a normal part. It's all one solid. So what we want to do, and we'll start with the middle one, is add those tool break radiuses. It just helps it to look a little bit better. So that's how the parts are going to be distinguishable. You would need that in production. And this rendering that we're going to do is not necessarily, um, we're not going to create 
um, manufacturer parts at this time because there's no need to shell everything to get into the renderer. So what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll add our radiuses in there, and we're just going to go through here and just do break radiuses on all of it. So we've got that. Let's hide the top and the bottom. We'll grab the middle piece. And we'll come back in. We'll do all the break radiuses for this as well. And what I mean by break radiuses, um, we can talk more about. But at the heart of it, they are the fact that tools cannot have a perfectly 90 degree knife edge. What happens then is the tool will chip and wear, and you'll see that in your part. Um, so from a part design standpoint, you always have to have somewhat of a radius on the edges. So now, oops, hit the wrong button. I don't want to edit my feature. I want to come and I want to show them. So now we can start doing this. Let's just turn off all of our planes just so we can see this a little clearer. And now you can start seeing how there's part breaks in there. So those little radiuses really, really help, especially when it comes time to pull this into rendering, to communicate that this is separate parts, even if it's all the same color. So now, let's take a look at what we've got going here. Um, we could move on to the pot, but at the same time, I think I want to put on the little rubber feet that are there. So for that, we're going to do again a little rubber feet. We're going to go to the sketch on the bottom, not edit sketch. We want to go new sketch. We'll go normal to that version. And what we're going to basically do is we're going to put these feet at 45 degree angles. Now, what I'm going to do is show you the mirror tool for sketching. So let's first get our tool correct, the angle, because we want 45. And what we're going to do is we're going to say the rubber feet go about here. And we're going to make them 0.5. No, that looks a little ridiculous. 0.4. Okay, so we'll click select. Now what we want to do is we'll put in our center lines for the top and the bottom. And what we can do, or sorry, horizontal and vertical. What we want to do is let's just say we want to fully dimension this because we want the we want to know where the exact place is. Um, what we can do is do that here. Let's go with 1.5. And that's going to give us the in and out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to mirror ent entities. We're going to mirror this. And we're going to mirror it about this. And you can see it pop up. Now, you can't do multiple. So what you do is you mirror it, then you come over, you'll have to mirror it again. But this time you can select multiple entities, but you can only mirror it around one vertical horizontal. So there's that. Now the nice thing about this is that they all move tied off of the one dimension. So you can adjust it and see where you want to go with it. We can also go back in and we can add one more dimension. To get those right. And you'll see that all of them go. Now, we're not going to worry too much about um, 
whether or not there's part lines down in here at this point because you're never going to really see that in the rendering unless we do some really dynamic you know perspective like that um, but for now we won't worry about that you've already seen how to do it and we're aware of that so what we'll do now is we'll extrude the sketch let's select that sketch that item that item and that item we're going to extrude it we'll just do it point one We'll, go with, we'll stay with the 0.15. Now, because we know this is going to be a separate part, separate, separate material, separate color, we want to make sure that when we do it, there's our options, we don't want to merge results. So there they have it. We also want to put on some radiuses because again, everything has to have a radius so that the tooling works right so instead of clicking the edge i'm actually just going to click the face and you can see what's going on here is i can't actually add radiuses to multiple things because they're all separate bodies so what that would force me to do is that i have to then just go in and create a radius for each one now that can be a pain because then when I change it, I actually want it to just be the same at all times. So let's change the way that we did it. That's a downside of doing multiple bodies in a same sketch. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, change the sketch. We're going to actually just delete these. And then what we'll do is we'll extrude that singular body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select it and we're going to do a pattern. So we'll do that. We'll take this. We're going to come back, go to our features. We're going to go to a linear pattern. We're going to do circular. So it's going to ask for the direction. We'll slick on that edge because we know that's the direction we want to go. We know that um, features or faces. So what we can do is again, come up here, select it, or easier yet, we're just going to select the body. Oops, I've got to actually go up here and go into the bodies and select the body. Now. So it's saying, please select the feature. I don't want the feature because I selected this. I have to select the check mark for the body. Not letting me do that. So let's just simply go invalid feature. So for some reason, it's not liking me. So let's try to do that again. We're going to go linear pattern. We're going to go circular pattern. We're going to turn off that. We want to do the bodies. We want to click on this body. So I'm not sure what the glitch was. Sometimes exiting the command helps. We're not doing um, 24, 360 degrees. So we want to do equal spacing. And we will do 90 degrees. And we'll do 3 or 4, sorry. And we have to get the direction. And you can see as, as you select things, it will get it. So now what we want is we want it to go all the way around. So 360 degrees, four of them. So it breaks up 360 degrees and it breaks it into four and puts them in. Now, what this all allows us to do is when I come back, you'll see that I can change the radius and everything updates. So if we know that those are the commands that we want, then why not simply go with that and then 
that saves us time of having to do multiple radiuses on a part. Okay, so while we're down here in this area, let's just toss on this bottom radius um, just to help. We're going to keep it with the 0 0.05. Now, later on, this would probably be made into, this actual single piece would probably have multiple parts. But again, for this rendering, um, at this point, we'll be fine. Um, and I'll show you later on how to do a few things, see if that's what we like. So, here we've got it. We pretty much got everything that we want for the main body, other than the display face. Um, so we're, we're going we're going good um, let's come back there's that oh and that's another thing also so not only does it show up what that command or that feature was it'll also show you up what the body is so and the reason is is what I want to do is I just wanted to come in and do the part break radius here before I forget there's nothing worse then finding out that you've done the entire rendering and you forgot to do the part break radius because something just doesn't look right. So we'll do that. We'll hide this part. We'll show the other part. And you can see I've got a somewhat memorize what the parts were because I didn't name them so again now you can see even though everything else was a 0 0.05 watch what happens when I do a 0 0.05 it gets a little bit bigger um, or 0 0.01 and that's because it started with a knife edge so if I do that and then I pull up the other part and show it you can see there's considerably more of a gap there um, that's because I brought this to a knife edge. Theoretically, I'd bring it up and drop it down. So for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust that a little bit. And instead of doing the same radius, we'll go with a, let's say, 0 0.005. Let's go with a 0 0.001. And that'll be good for what we want. So it'll still give us that look that it's two separate parts. Um, we'll toss on our next radius down here. Now if you really want to be a much better modeler then you wouldn't be dumping radiuses in all over the place like I am doing. You would group them together and for each solid body you would do the radiuses for that whole solid body at a time. Um, but again that comes down into conversations later where we can be more organized. Um, and I'll walk through and show that. Now, I think we're pretty good. Let's, um, let's just bring up our sketch here. We'll turn on our sketch planes. make this so that we can see our sketch um, oh, there we go we are missing a part and that is the vents so let's kind of let's let's just do that quickly we're not going to go through all the way for the through holes but we definitely want to see what it looks like um, so what we're going to do here is we'll select our plane and we're going to make this actually really simple um, we'll do our sketch oops get back to our plane since I want to have them symmetrical what I will do is I will draw a center line in 
What I'm going to do then is just make a simple pill shape up here. We could dimension if we need to, but I'm not going to at this time. What we then are going to do is mirror that entity across that line. So you can see that. What we'll do is we will just have this extrude straight out and do a cut. You can see I'm trying to grab the arrow, but I'm not getting it. So why don't I just zoom in closer? We'll do that cut. It went all the way through, but I'll show you something later. Because again, we're taking some shortcuts so that we only actually see um, what we need for the render. But I do not want it to, when you do a view, have it go all the way that far back. So. What we'll do is we'll have that and we'll go edit the feature. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the start of the sketch plane and we're going to offset it a little bit. So we'll just bring it out. And again, I'm just guesstimating here quickly. So what we can do now is rotate it and revolve it. So what we'll do is we're going to go with a linear pattern, circular. We are going to use that feature that we just had, which is the cut. We need to know what the axis is or what the direction is. So direction, we can simply just pick that. Um, now you can see 306 degrees. Well, we don't want to do that. Let's go with 45. Okay, and then in that 45, we'll put more. But you can see that's not necessarily where we want it, or the 45 isn't what we want. Let's actually just turn this on so we can see a little bit better. So we want it to be a little bit bigger than 45. Let's draw with a 65, and let's add a few extra in. Let's hit accept. And then you can see we've got those coming out directional. So that's where we'll go for now. And we'll just say that that's where it's going to stay. So I'm thinking at this point we are done building this main body of the house. And we can move on to the carafe here quickly. Okay, so it looks like we have everything that we want right now for these base models. And we can start building the carafe. Although it does kind of bother me that, well, actually one, that part doesn't go far enough in. And then two, that it doesn't have that little hole. Um, I'm going to have to do that for the rendering anyways, no matter what. So let's just come back up. We're going to do a quick fix. Um, we're going to hide that part. We're going to select that face. And we are going to right click. And I want to move that face. I've got to find that tool. So move copy bodies. No. So what we're going to do is we'll simply come back to that sketch that we had. Because if it's the problem there, then it's the problem over here too. So there's the sweep. There's the sketch that we used for the path. We'll edit that. We'll go to normal. So that we can see the view. And then let's just pull it up here. What I'm doing now is I'm just deleting a couple of the constraints that we had. And we're going to get that so that it goes all the way through the part. So that should be much better. Let's pull up the body that we hid. Okay. 
now we don't have that problem although I don't like the size of this radius going in there so let's just minimize that so what we're doing is basically just doing some of our edits and tweaks um, to see what we like what we don't like so we will reduce that a little bit and we'll put that there and as I look at that you know I'm not sure if that's where I like 100%, but I think we'll call it good for now. Okay, what we need to do now is just make that little cutout on here. And the one thing I like to do is use parts. I don't like to keep create as planes constantly, so I like to minimize how many planes. So if I can use a surface face to draw a sketch, I'm happy to do that. So with that, we're going to use this face to create the surface. Um, and then what we will do is use that boundary edge. So what you can see is that I clicked on the face. It automatically recognizes the edge. So if I go offset, it offsets that um, from that edge of that circle. Now, all I want to do is have a light offset. I don't want too much, that's way too much. Just enough so that there's gonna be that gap. And I'm, I'm gonna go even less here because um, we want a tight tolerance. So let's go 0 0.005 and that should be good enough. Now, I'm gonna use that sketch to extrude and do a extruded cut. So we're gonna select it, do an extruded cut now, because it goes through multiple bodies, this is where we want to have it just go through the one base piece. So let's bring that back up from our body menu tree. We'll show that body. So what we want to do here is what are the bodies we want to cut? So here it says auto select, which means that it's going to select everything <laughs> in there. So it's by default selecting all of them. So what we want to do is we want to select bodies and we want to turn off auto select. And we're just going to select the one that we want it to cut out of. So now you can see we've got that little bit of a gap that might still be too much. We'll toss on our little break radius. Again, the reality is, is for tooling, we need that. But part of the reason we're doing the break radius for this is because we want to have it show up in the renderings so that we can have it hit highlights because anytime you have a radius that along an edge that is what hits the highlight a 90 degree corner will not show up a highlight so we'll put that on there helps if I type it in right Okay, so again, as I spoke about earlier, we're still taking the approach of build, evaluate, and refine. So it's just at a larger scale now. So I've built it. Now I'm going through and I'm just kind of refining everything that I want. So let's add another radius up here. This is all union. So let's just go down here. And as, as I mentioned, there are... You know, we're kind of taking a little bit of a disorder um, to this. There could be considerably better ways of doing it, cleaner ways, um, so that your menu tree is very well organized. But for the sake of this, we're not going to do it today. Okay. There we go looks good now just to make life easier I don't think we actually need to have this whole unit on here for that so let's again try to keep things as organized as we can um, and we'll name things a little bit later but 
what we're going to do now is we're just going to hide all of these items so that we can build the carafe separate. So again, we'll use our front plane. Now, what we have here is we have one, two, three, four parts for this. Um, we got the carafe itself, then we have the handle, then we have the lid, uh, then we have the metal band that's going to be on there. So for this right now, let's get into the carafe and build it from there. So for this, we are actually going to just do one fully defined sketch for the carafe. And for this, actually, we're going to use the shell feature on it because we have a nominal wall thickness. So let's go in. And again, it's a center point, so we'll revolve it. We're not putting any taper or anything on it. So we're just going to bring it down. And at the heart of it, this is this is all we're doing for this. Um, very, very simple form for the carafe, obviously. Um, we won't we'll put the radius on now we're not going to worry about uh, doing it as the solid model okay now let us do the revolve for that. We'll exit out of this sketch, hitting the check mark. So we've already got it, it matches the sketch. We'll select that, and you can see what I actually did is it asked for the revolution access, and I selected the sketch. So let's go back, we'll select that there. Now we've got that. Let's just do a quick, simple shell. And what we want to do is what face is going to be the open face. So we'll do that there. We want to show preview sometimes. That can just help us to see it. So we've got a point one, And we're going to say this is going to be a nice high-end uh, carafe. You know, help to retain the heat. So let's go up a little bit. And we're just going to do point one two five. So there we've got that part. Now, glass, as you guys know or have seen, always has a little rounded corner because you don't want to have sharp edges. So we'll just put a slight radius on these edges. Have one going on the inside here. There we go. So that looks pretty good for what we want to do. Um, let's just toss in the metal band that's going to go around the glass. That's just going to be a quick and simple one. So again, we're going to do a revolve. Let me just get it so that I can see my sketch. And all we're going to do is we're going to have that surface on surface thing. So let's, oops, wrong rectangle. Um, for this one, I want to do a corner rectangle. Just do it right there. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit in the height so that I can do the handle on the flat part of the glass. So for this one, 
let's dimension it. We're going to have it right off the bottom of the component. And then what we'll do, so we'll anchor that in so that is the part that stays. As we dimension it, we'll make that and we'll do 0 0.35. Let's take a look. I think that might be a little too fat or high. 0.25 and that's more just in relationship of looking at what I think I would like from a band standpoint proportions and that okay so this is going to actually be a very very thin piece um, it's just a nice little metal band um, and you know what we may take it where we offset it in so that we've got a contour on the glass but for now we're just going to have that on the edge So we'll go with a thin piece. So all we're doing here is going to revolve this sketch. Again, we'll select the axis, the axis, and we've got that there. Oops. And the one thing I did do is, again, I want that to be a separate part because we're going to assign a separate material. If we ever decide we want a prototype, we would need to spec that as a second part so the prototypers could make it um, or so that we could bring it into the file in 3D print. So we want to make sure we do that. Um, okay, so if we start on step, what we want to do now is do the top cap for this. So let's get in there. And you can see how pretty much everything I'm doing here is with the revolve command. Um, what I could do is do this entire piece as a series of extrudes too. So let's, let's just kind of do that here quickly. So what we want to do is we know it's going to be an extrude, so we need a surface plane to sketch on. So let's just select that because the lid would rest on there. And let's go and create a sketch. Now, as we look at this and we go here, we see it's slightly overbuilt from that standpoint to give that little lip. So what we'll do is we'll go in, create our circle. And we're just going to bring it out a little bit past. And again, for this, I'm kind of eyeballing it, um, which I think will work fine for our intents and purposes. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to stack it up. Um, so we'll extrude that piece. Not that much. We need to make the diameter a little bit bigger here. Now, since I didn't define the dimension, I don't know how much a little bit is. So let's just toss on a quick dimension there. Um, 5.35, let's go with a 5.5, and we'll call that good for now. Uh, let's then update it. And again, you can see what I did not do is hit my merge. So because I want this to be a separate piece. So what we're going to do now is we want to do the next part that goes up. So we're going to stack it again. So we're going to do another sketch on here. We'll draw our circle. And we'll bring it out. Now for this, you can see that what we want to do is we want to have it match up with this part. So let's find that part. And again, you can see how in order for me to find that part, 
I have to click through all my items because I didn't name it. So I drew a sketch. I'm going to toss a dimension on that sketch. I eyeballed it. And then I'm going to extrude it. Now let's see how close did I get to what we actually want. Okay. So I actually got pretty close. Um, yeah, surprisingly close. So, but let's say I wanted to be exactly with that tangent. And let's say at that point, we always wanted it to be, you know, if the bottom part, if we had to grow the top part in our design, we wanted to make sure this always grew too. So what we can do is create a relationship. We'll come back in the sketch. We'll delete that circle. We're still in the sketch, but now what we want to do is we want to insert um, a sketch and we're going to project this curve onto this face within our sketch. So what we can do is select that edge and then we can come over here and go convert. That's the little command down here. And there's a variety of different ones, but convert entities. And now you can see that it automatically put that circle on there. It's black, which means it's fully defined. And it's fully defined because this is what's defining it. Unless we make a change to that, we cannot change that. So we'll come back, we'll do the extrude. Extrude that up a little bit. We did want to join that so that we have it as the full body. Now let's toss that radius in there. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to do this, or I thought I would do it this time, is you saw how many sketches I had to do and how many commands I had to do. So if we start, we had to do a boss. Within there, we did a sketch. We then had to do another sketch and then do another boss extrude. Then we had to put a radius on. Now. If we had gone from a side view and done a simple revolve, what we could have done is a single sketch that would have had this contour. We could have put the radiuses all in it. And then so it would be one sketch and one command, which would have been the revolve. So those are the kinds of things, different ways to create something but what is the easiest way to create it that's going to give you the least number of features in your tree, which means that it becomes much more manageable to work with. So let us go back. We're going to add some radiuses here. Um, I'll be honest with you, when we kind of add up a little bit later and do some modifications, I will more than likely go back and adjust all this because I'm really not liking what it's doing. And I'm pretty sure that I did not get the de de design intent correct um, on the Dieter Rams project, product, Dieter Rams, because I can't imagine that they would have had that. Just personal opinion again. Okay, so I'm also not gonna put any detail up in the top. We know that there would be drip openings, things of that nature. Um, but we'll take a look at that later. And you know, right now when we do the 3D rendering, it should be not noticeable for that. Okay, excellent. So we're coming along here nicely. Let us start looking at we, what, what we want to do with the handle here. Um, so with the handle, it's the exact same thing that we did with, with the support bar here. Uh, and what we did was we did a swept surface. So we had to create a profile here. 
and then we had to go through and go down. Now, let us do that. What we need to do is we're going to assume that this is very much of a rectangular handle that comes down um, and it'll have some radiuses on the edges. So we'll start with drawing the profile path. We're going to go from the center there or the front plane. And what we want to do is we want to have the profile path or the path start at the center of whatever the profile is. So for that, we're going to draw our line and have it in the center of the sketch. And what I mean by that is we will come here and we're basically just going to do this here. To make things easier, we're going to overextend and then we'll trim things back here. But we want to get the radius in now because we're going to do that sweep and it's going to go right around the corner. So let's get those radiuses in now. And if we do both radius at the same time, then we don't have to worry about dimensioning them separately. So you can kind of see here that that's probably not going to be that round of a handle and it's going to be more of that um, conical shape and fillet. So when we go back and do a rendering and I'll say I don't like it, um, we're going to go back and we'll refine it. And again, I'll show you how to do those with splines to make things a little bit nicer. So there's our path. We have that built. We're going to make sure that it goes through the object so that we can trim it back properly. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to have the path created. So I don't want to build it off of this plane that's all the way in the center. So I'm going to insert a reference plane. So again, insert reference geometry plane. And for this time, I know where I want it to start. So I'm just going to click on the end of the line there and use that as a point and it'll go straight there. That allows me to do that. Now, as you start going, things start getting a little bit more confusing because uh, there gets to be a whole lot of planes. You can name the plane. So we could call this handle plane. And that just helps us to know where we're going and what we want to click on so we're not clicking on the wrong, wrong one. And you can see it names it in there as well. So let's do the sketch. We're going to go normal to that. And you know what? While we're doing this so we can see, let's turn off the other bodies um, because I'm finding them to be in the way. Okay, so let's basically start with a rectangle. I'm going to use that just to block things in when I go to work on it. So we'll do a center one. Oops. I accidentally hit the wrong thing and went to edit the sketch. So let's get back up there. Let's go create new sketch. Do that. Now, for this, the top part of the handle is going to be the same as the bottom part of the handle. So we're not going to worry about drawing the two separate ones. Um, so what we'll do is just use the one and in another session I will show you um, what we can do where we can do lofts and have different sections for it. Okay, now if we want, we could put our radiuses in here, um, or we could change the form here to get it so that this is more rounded, which I think I'll do in here just to give it that extra comfort feel. 
I'm not going to put the radiuses on the corner because I want to see what those look like in 3D after I sweep the surface. So let's come in. We're going to add the three point arc. We're going to go to the two ends and then we will just go up a little bit. Now, since we want to make sure that we know what that dimension is because we're going to have the same one on the bottom. Let's just go. We'll say 6.5. We've got that accurate. Now let's do the bottom one. Now again, if we know that the bottom is always going to be the same, we could just mirror this. In this, since it's ergonomics, we may determine that part of the handle, um, we want it to be fatter. So we want to do a separate arc that we can change individually versus having one that's mirrored. So let's start off with the same size. So that's going to be 6.5 again. Taper that down. And now what we're going to do, we don't want to delete these lines because we want to keep them there as reference. But what we're going to do is we're, we're going to make them construction lines. And in order to do that, you can just come in and go construction geometry and it converts it. Now, we've got our profile and our path. So let's go. We'll come over here again. We're going to go to Swept Bodies or Swept Boss. It automatically recognizes the sketch as the profile. Now let's pick the path. And you can see that we've got this handle. Looks kind of bulbous, looks kind of fat. What we're going to do is we will make sure that it is not merged and that it is not becoming connected with any of the other items. So merge result is off. We'll hit yes. And now let's go back to pull up just the carafe so that we can see how that handle looks in relationship to the rest of the model. It looks fat. Very, very fat. And I also don't like, like we were talking about, I don't think this is bowed out enough fit the comfort of your hand. So let's go back to our two sketches. We'll start with actually the only thing we need to do is edit the um, profile sketch. So we're going to come in and we are going to change that box from a 1.5 and we're probably going to drop it down to maybe just one. So you can see that that's kind of changed our radiuses here. We're going to leave that inside one. We're also going to drop this down because it just it still feel, felt a little fat there. So we're going to drop it down to 0.35. Now this is where I was saying you can see where if I had mirrored this I would not be able to change this radius to make it larger, smaller. So let's change it now. It's going to be independent of this one. And we're going to go with 7.5. See how that looks. Didn't actually do what I wanted to do. Um, oops. And that is because I made the mistake. Is I want a smaller radius to get that to stick out higher. OK. So let's go with that. Now I hit exit and updates and now you can see that this has become a lot more rounded on it. I, I like it. It gives a little bit nicer form. Now let's toss in some radius here. And what we'll do is we'll do all four edges at once because we know that it's all going to be the same part. Let's increase the size of the radius, get that on there. I do think, let's just see what it looks like when we go with asymmetrical. Now if you remember what that means is you're able to have it start at different spots. Um, so it's not equal where it starts. So again, if we do symmetrical, the distance that the radius starts along the vertical and along the horizontal is the same. With asymmetrical, you can have it start at different points. 
So let's just hit select. And I think I like that. It kind of gives a little bit of a different highlight in here. Um, still, you get that little tangent highlight edge. And again, when we start getting into splines and that, um, using splines for radiuses, we'll see how we can fix that or we'll show you. So, okay, excellent. Now, let's take a look at that. So, right now, it literally goes straight into the glass. So, we want to cut that off so that it is correct. I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle this section up here yet. Um, I might just modify the design to accommodate this just for the sake of this tutorial um, and so that I'm not doing a whole lot of redesign or trying to figure out exactly what was going on with the original concept. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this handle, make it a little squatter, um, put a band around here for it to attach on, and that's what it would screw into. So let's just take a quick look at that. Um, we're going to do the exact same band as we did down there. Uh, so let's, let's instead of redrawing it, let's give it, um, we'll make it the same feature because we're going to say that we always want that to be the same band for a manufacturing standpoint. So let's take that and what we'll do is we'll do a linear pattern. But it's not really a pattern because, well I guess it is, but we're only going to use two. So there we have it. We want to make sure we select the right item. So for this, I think we'll use bodies. There it is there. We've already got it set to three, but we just want two. Now let us just scroll and add the space just going straight up. So you're just kind of seeing how I'm cheating a little bit here. Now, what that also allows us to do is if I want to make that somewhat thicker, I can and it'll update the top one as well. So let's do that command. Now, here's the thing. If I want to adjust this handle and I want to drop that part down, when I go to edit the sketch, because the sketch is prior, or because I moved that pattern of that prior to there, you can see how it's grayed out. So that means it's not showing me what was after this. So the nice thing about that is, because really I should have added this well before um, I did this, but not, not to worry. What we can do is there's the revolve there. All we need to do is take this pattern and move it before below the revolve. So now it's moved up in the menu tree, and you'll see, because it happened before, if I come back and edit this sketch, it's still there. And the reason I want it to still be there is because I want to use it as a reference. Now, I want to bring this down. You can see that it is locked by a tangent to that line, so I'll just click on that, delete it, and then I'm just going to grab this and drag it down. Let's update that. And then I think I'm going to have, I'm really kind of butchering the whole style here or the proportions, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have it so that this band is the full thickness of this. In order to do that, I need to adjust the dimension for that part. And for some reason, I'm not getting it to update every time I make the change, so quick fix 
go below it, go past it, and go up it, and then it solves it. So there you can see I've made that thicker or taller, and then it's also made the top one taller. But because it's made that top taller, I need to go back and fix the pattern so that it does not go all the way up past the carafe. So let's just do that quickly. We'll drop this down. And you can see sometimes, you know, you don't have everything perfectly worked out. So it's okay to go back and adjust things. Um, and I am going for a visual looks like model. Um, and mainly I'm adjusting this because I'm not sure what's going on in there. But no worries. Um, if we were to go to or say, hey, let's make a prototype, then we would definitely want to fix these things and look at them to make sure that it's ergonomically correct. Um, but we have a little bit of latitude here because this is a learning class. So I think that's going to do it. We'll update that. And there it looks pretty good and it's set in pretty nice. So the problem that we have though that we haven't um, addressed yet is if we look at this because we overbuilt you can see that that handle goes all the way through into the carafe. So what we're going to do is we want to do a cut and what the easiest way to do that is we're going to do a revolve cut. Um, we'll get into the front plane and basically what a revolve cut is is you're going to literally draw a line and have it cut around that section. So what we would do for that is you'll see cut and then what you'll see oop, cut revolved cut. So again we're going to take that plane, draw a sketch on it, We want it actually edge on edge. We'll go in, go to our revolved cut. It already sees it, access point. And then you can see there that it's going to do the cut. We'll turn that on so it's a thin feature. So that's not doing what I thought it would do. So let's do it something different here. We're going to change the direction and we'll make that part thicker so that we're making sure that we cut through this whole thing. And now again, it's asking what bodies we want. It's selecting all. So let's just do that there. So we'll cut, we'll cut it. And now you can see it doesn't go all the way through. But we do have the part up there. So instead of doing multiple cuts, what we always need to do is consider what can we do in one stage. So now what we can do is let's go back. We know that we could do this all in the one sketch and it wouldn't cause an issue. So just by simply pulling that line up, going straight, updating it, we now have that fixed. So let's take a quick look here. We'll go into the shaded view. And we've kind of gotten everything we want. Let's just pull everything up just so we're looking at the full model. And there we go. So let's, one final check. We just want to make sure that we've got everything right. Let's take a look at our sketch plane that we have our sketch on, because there we can see the sketch. Let's turn this and let's, look. oh, so it looks like I forgot one little feature, which is the actual heating element that the carafe sits on. So let's go in and adjust that and we'll create one there. So. For this, I am going to just use a extrude off the surface. Because um, sometimes, you know what, it gets boring and you just want to change things up a little bit. 
So let's come back to the solid model. We'll hide that part just so that we can see a little bit better. On this plane, select it. We'll go with a sketch, not edit sketch, but new sketch. So I'll go there, go new sketch. We've got the circle here. We're just going to eyeball it a little bit. Then we'll extrude it up. Drop this down so that the glass sits right on it. We'll toss in our radius. And let's go in here, turn that back on. And it looks like we're pretty much done. Let's take a quick look at this in perspective. Not bad. I can really see why this handle needs to be up higher. Um, just from a standpoint of it just it looks squat and fat in relationship to the rest. But I think for now what we've got uh, we should be happy with. And we can then move on to the next steps which will be getting the file ready to bring into solid or into um, Keyshot. So excellent. So that's going to be a separate webinar um, and we'll get that going here in a little while.